Hey everybody, I'm the conservative nerd. How's it going out there? I got some reviews, some indie stuff, and this crap I'm going to talk about today. Ah, uh, first up, uh, The Shadow One. Man, this was great. Uh, this is a good book. This is solid. Uh, it's it's really really good. Uh, it starts off with like this guy all burnt up in a hospital bed, and this nurse is just talking to him and telling him a story and. It gets, it, it's good, this is a solid book, and uh, it opens up a lot of questions, but it's it's cool. I, I, Shadow One, if you ever read it, this was from last week, I, I was going to review it last week, I just didn't get around to it, I got a new job, but this was great. All New Fathom 7. Ah, this was good, I, I'd have to give it a good, uh, you know, it's Michael Turner's All New Fathom 7, but they kind of forget that the thing that got Fathom over with Michael Turner's art and so without Michael Turner doing the book it's almost he doesn't write it and he doesn't art draw it so but it's still good they do a good job uh the one thing I thought was kind of cool in this that there's actually a Trump shot with Trump line and it doesn't come off as oh man they wrote him evilly bad they kind of write him like he is so I, I kind of I thought wow you know Marvel could learn that you don't have to make everybody Hitler, you know, you can just write them like they are, and it, it's better than just going, oh, you're Hitler. And then people go, well, no, he's not. Yeah. But no, I, I thought this was good. It kind of gets political and stuff, but in a smart way, not in a bad way. Uh, I think this book uh, walks that line well between, you know, real politics and going off the left to going so crazily extremist left that, it's terrible. No, but this holds up well. It's done pretty good. Uh, next up, I read uh, Black Magic number seven. Uh, Greg Rucka writes this, and I, I've liked some Greg Rucka stuff, and have not liked some Greg Rucka stuff. He's very hit or miss for me. Uh, this is issue seven. I like the art. The art is done in a black and white style, kind of reminiscent of the old uh, black and white Marvel magazines they used to do in the late seventies, early eighties. Uh, I like it. I did not care for the story. It just didn't seem to go anywhere. Uh, I give it a readable. It's nothing special. It was a little slow moving. Nothing really happened in it. And, uh, I did like the art, though. Uh, G.I. Joe, number eight. This was good. Uh, this is the opposite of Black Magic, where is I loved the story. Didn't much care that much for the art. I found it to be a little uh, cartoony. I enjoyed the old Marvel style of uh, G.I. Joe, uh, the Larry Hama books, man. Larry Hama is the man. One thing Marvel forgets is they were always diverse, you know. They had guys like Larry Hama and Dwayne McDuffie and Christopher Priest and Louise Simonson and Ann Nocenti. I mean, they've always been diverse. Now they just went off the deep ends. And, but uh, G.I. Joe 8 was good. I, I, I There's an awesome fight scene between Snake Eyes and Quick Kick. That I thought was really cool. Uh, I, well, yeah, it was good. I, I have to say it was good. I, I'm not I'm not a big fan of the really cartoony art, but it was good. Uh, Ghostbusters 101, number 6. Why why did they make this? Oh, yeah, it's the old Ghostbusters, and there's a time warp, and the worlds are colliding, so the old Ghostbusters meet the new Ghostbusters, and there's a Ghostbusters Academy, and... It's not very good. It's crap. Uh, the, the art again is really cartoony, and the uh, the dialogue is really mumbo jumbo y. You know that science gobbledygook that doesn't really mean anything because it's not real science. And yeah, it's just a lot of that talk, and I really found it to be very very boring. Ah, uh, Star Wars thirty five. This was great. Uh, Marvel. If you could take care of your Star Wars books, like you take care, if you if you took care of your Marvel books, that's what I meant to say. Like you take care of your Star Wars books, you wouldn't be in this mess. You wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't be hated by your old fans. Uh, but yeah, well, you protect these books with your life. No, this is a good book. The art and books, awesome. It's been awesome. Ah, uh, it's a Han Solo issue, so. That's cool. He's got to transport Grokkis the Hut. So, 
it's it's pretty it's pretty awesome. Yeah, I, I have to say Star Wars thirty five was definitely a good read. Uh Savage Dragon two twenty six. This is the Trump one. This is the Oh boy. Oh whew. First off, I'm just gonna let the review drop its crap. Boom, plop. I just dropped the crap out of on you, Savage Dragon two twenty six. <sighs> I've never really read this book before, so to jump in at issue 226, but this is the Trump issue, you know, with Trump on the cover screaming about oh, you illegal aliens, and that's the whole book, there's a lot of, sh there's this one awesome splash page of just Trump's face, and then all evil white people all around him saying evil things about everybody, yeah. Oh, man, everybody gets it in this book, man. It's just evil white heads talking about how much they hate aliens, illegal aliens, uh, gays, oh, uh, trans. I mean, this is just America's racist, white people are racist, you're evil, race bait and bullcrap, Trump's the evil, evilest man in the world. Yeah, and to be so adult, because he swears constantly... This book is really, really written immaturely. I can see why Eric Larson's really never branched out or never done anything besides Savage Dragon because he's a very image after two twenty six, man, you know, you think you kinda of have a maturity about you, but it's written in such an immature style. Like there's somebody at the funeral says like death stinks like a bag of farts. How old are you, Eric Larson? That is a horror. That's just totally. That's more cringy than the Trump stuff. It's so cringy. Oh yeah, this book is just not good. I I don't know how it lasted this long. I mean, I guess the art. I mean, he kind of has a Kirby style, and I can see why people might like that. Uh and a little cosmicness to it. But this issue was so heavy-handed, and the writing is not very good. He's a better artist than he is a writer. I'll tell you that. Ah, uh, Ringside Eleven. I'm a wrestling fan. This is by Image, and I haven't read this book, but I jumped on here. Wrestling fan, not knowing what to expect, but expecting, you know. I didn't really know what to expect, to tell you the truth. I didn't know if they were going to take, like, wrestling was real, which would have been dumb. Uh, but no, they took it more like, wrestling is not real, but... It's just a bunch of people talking a lot. And there's a gay relationship between tag team partners. <sighs> yeah, it's... It's not very really good. It, it, this is crap. I really... If you want to do a book about wrestling, maybe get somebody that knows wrestling. I don't know if the guy writing knows wrestling, but it doesn't seem to really care because he's more in, interested in identity politics than wrestling so it's almost like who do you think who's this book for who's who yeah who's this book for because it seems like it'd be for wrestling fans but you know to make wrestlers gay all the time is kind of against mostly what they like or what they believe you know like i don't know it was it is crap i i just don't know who this is for though i really don't like uh gotham city garage too it's readable. I'm not... It reads so much like A Dark Knight Returns. Frank Miller, even the art, tries to be Frank Miller-ish. But it's all females. So, like, all the good guys are females. And, uh... It's feminist-heavy. But not, like, Marvel feminist-heavy. More like normal movie feminist-heavy. Hollywood feminist-heavy. So... It's not despicable or bad or anything, but it's not my cup of tea. I gave it a readable. Jimmy's Bastards, number three, by Garth Ennis. Oh, man, this is so great. This book is just great. Thank you for Garth Ennis. Thank the Lord for Garth Ennis. Can I say that? Because I just love this man. I love the fact that this man is out there doing stuff like this. If you're not reading this book, I suggest you either... Get back issues or pick up the trade if you're like me and hate social justice and hate this silliness because this book is pretty much an F you to social justice. 
the plot is alone is just awesome. This guy's like a James Bond dude, and he bangs a lot of ladies, and he's got thousands and thousands of little bastard children out there that never had a dad. Now they hate him. They found out he's their dad and want to kill him. And they gang up and become this army that's going to kill this guy. And uh, it's just freaking fun. It's fun because he just sticks it in the social justice butthole every chance he gets in this book. And I love it. I just love it. I love Garthenus. Thank you, Garthenus. I heard he's coming back to Preacher. Or Punisher, I mean. Please. I guess they're going to give another Punisher title, so I have two titles, because you can't fire Becky Clooney, because I guess she's a woman, you can't fire her, even though she's doing the worst job of any human being on that book, in the history of that book. Like, I, I've read almost all the Punisher runs, and even when they made him Frankenstein, or Avenging Angel is still better than what Becky Clooney is doing. If she's made him an incompetent boob, She's made him an incompetent boob. That's the Punisher right now. It's an incompetent boob who can't even take out a hamburger looking guy who pushes people in front of the subway because he has to go get a homeless guy. Crazy ass homeless people have to help the Punisher now. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you go to for help. It's like, oh yeah, I want this guy here who lives in a box. So he obviously made some good life decisions that he'll know how to figure this out because he lives in a box. So he's probably one of the smartest people around. <sighs> yeah, but no, I, I hope Garthenius comes back and, and does the Punisher justice, because, I mean, if you're going to have two Punishers, like Clunan and Enos, isn't it going to look ridiculous? Like, wouldn't that, won't, won't that look ridiculous? Like, oh yeah, which book are you going to buy? Like, who would buy the Clunan one? Like, it pretty much means that you're going to have one that sells and one that doesn't. Yeah, I... Uh, yeah, it's just me, but I, I, I wouldn't imagine, like, having Becky Cloonan try to outdo Garthenus. Uh, Faith in the Future Force 2. This is Faith is a Fat Girl, the fat superhero. And I'll tell you what, I didn't hate the original Faith book. I thought it was readable, a little girlier than I would like. But, I mean, if I was a girl, it's still better than most of the stuff in Marvel. Uh... But Faith in the Future Force is freaking great. Uh, both issues have been so good. It's almost like an event book for Valiant. I I really like love this book. And I I know I, I wasn't expecting it. I was not. I, I gave Faith a readable. I thought it was okay, but it wasn't. I was like, yeah, I wouldn't you know read it if I didn't have to. Uh, but this book is great. I, I mean, this is a cool book. I really like it. I I'd look up the first, the, try to get both the issues, man, and uh, you're in for a really cool, fun superhero uh, ride. And, and I'm pretty much everybody from Valiant gets in this thing, man. Uh, this is cool. I love it. Yeah, I really, I'm shocked. I'm giving the great to Faith in the Future Force. It just shows, though. It just shows that. You can do anybody. There's no such thing as bad characters, just bad writers. I mean, anybody, you know, I could, you know, you could take Faith and make her cool, and they did, and it's fun. It is, it's a, it's a really cool read, and, but yeah, Marvel, nobody, there's no fat, you know, Marvel did this, it'd be fat shaming, fat shaming, fat shaming. Blonde white guys would be coming up calling her fat all the time, and they would just be terrible, and be heavy handed and boring, but they don't know how to do anything that's not heavy handed and boring right now. So, yeah, so, you, you know, you can get better stuff in the indies, really, to tell you the truth, there's better stuff out there. Some of it's crap, and some of it's good. I mean, I'm loving Jimmy's Bastards, and I'm loving Faith in the Future Force, and I'm loving The Shadow. These are all, I would rank these up there with anything Marvel's doing. So, yeah, uh, I also wanted to talk, now that I got my indie reviews done, uh, about the Spencers. Nick and Richard. I almost feel like these two are brothers. If you don't know who Richard Spencer is, he's like a white supremacist, douchebag, douche nozzle, alt-right, butthole. And if you don't know who Nick Spencer is, he's like a left-wing, alt-left, socialist, douchebag, butthole. And uh, I almost feel like they're like brothers. Like, they wouldn't admit they're brothers. But they're probably brothers, you know? Here's why. Everybody knows those two brothers or two sisters that 
whatever the one says, the other one's the total opposite all the time. Like, one says one thing, the other one's just, oh, no, 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 and they're always arguing. And it's like, how are you two brothers or sisters, you know? That's what I feel like the Spencers are. They're both so far, like, well, Nick grew up with Richard always being all right, and he was always all left, and now they're both just politician wannabes spewing ridiculous hate from both of their mouths. Yeah, I, I, I almost feel like they, they should have been brothers, man, or they... They might be, you know, they never admit it. The Spencers aren't going to admit it, but I think Richard and Nick are the same. I think they're brothers. I think they're brothers. They won't admit they're brothers. They spell Spencer the same. They could be. I'm, I might be onto something here. This is my new conspiracy theory. Richard Spencer and Nick Spencer are brothers. And they won't admit it because they hate each other. Because they're both so far. And the only reason they're both so far alt and so alt right and alt left is because, uh, the other one's right, so the other one went super left, and they just keep going farther apart because they hate each other. They're just spreading it out, you know? Just keep, oh, well, he said this, and he's getting so far right, I got to get so far left. And that's what I think is going on with Nick. But it's, uh, Secret Empire's done. He could be going to D.C. to do some damage. You know Nick Spencer, man? He's a hell of a con man. He's a hell of a con man. And D.C., man... What's going on with signing Mags, the bags, the lie, Visaggio? Oh my god, this is the worst woman, man. This is a woman that says she hates cis males. And we should take a baseball bat to the teeth. Ooh, that's good advertising for your company. That's going to get a lot more fans in there. And she's a tranny, okay? She's not even a woman. She's, she's a guy with a wig, is what she is. What he is. So Meg's the bag. Bag of shit. Bag of dicks. Whatever whatever bag you want to put in that bag. That's a bag that you see you don't want to open. And I know they just it's a 12 week writer seminar. But still. And like they're going to offer jobs. And if they don't offer a job to the bag. What do you think the bag's going to do? The bag's going to scream and scream and scream and scream. So you just open the bag of snakes. And let it into your company. And these snakes are going to bite people. And infect them. And then you're going to get more and more of this shit. Yeah. She's a horrible person. And I got to, you know. Nobody that, if you can't be comfortable in your own body. And be happy with your own body. Then you're never going to be happy. I mean, it's just a fact. I'm sorry, but you see these people that get tons of plastic surgery. And tons of, uh, Surgery and stuff, it's the same thing. They're never happy. They're never going to be happy. That's just the way they are. If you got to change yourself to be happy, then it ain't going to work. If you can't be happy in your own skin, you're never going to be happy. Wearing a wig and acting like a woman is just a way for you to be a loud mouth and to get a job. You're a piece of crap. Mag's the bag. Anyway, so, yeah, I just, like, uh, throw a bunch of crap in there for the end. But, yeah, I know I hate this woman. To say that, you know, you hate the troops and she treats all this evil stuff out. And it's like, do you, why would you want that in your company? And she writes some indie book called Kim and Kim. Oh, I guess we know that's a super hardcore uh Homosexual propaganda and guarantee. I haven't read it. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll review that. I don't know. I don't know if I could handle it. From what I see from the back, I don't. I, I read enough bad shit from Marvel. Yeah. Oh, Marvel. God. Why is it so bad? Why do I have to dread reading your comics every week? Why well, have to sit there and look at the list and go, Oh, I don't want to read this. I don't want to read this. I don't want to read this. Why would you make books that bad? It ain't me, it's you. But I want to thank everybody for watching. You know, you guys are cool, and it's always cool to hear from you guys. And thank you so much. Everybody's been super cool to me since I started doing this, and I just want to say thank you. I had one douche. One douche, you know. That video that I got the douche on had like 180 hits, so out of 180 views, I had one douche. So I'm pretty lucky and pretty blessed. To have cool people like you guys out there. It's the community's not the problem. They want to make it the comics community's the problem. We're cool people. 
We're we're cool people, man. There's it's not us. It's you guys. We don't want propaganda. We just want good science fiction, good action adventure. We want good suspense. But no, you want to give us crap and you want to give us propaganda. And we don't want propaganda. Nobody wants propaganda. Nobody. So, I just want to say thanks for watching, guys. Enjoy the comics. Uh, and you guys have a good day.